Hello students, I am here to discuss the topic of project management. As our first lesson, let's see the basics of project management. It consists of four modules. The module one is understanding the meaning of project and the project management. Module two, background of project management system. Module three, project management concepts. And the last module, components of project management. Let us first consider what is actually a project is. A project is defined as a temporary work undertaken to create a unique product or service. What is a project? A project is a temporary endeavor undertaken to create a unique product or service. What do you mean by temporary? Temporary is having a definite start and a definite end. Certain time slot for a work to be done. Unique means which is different from the existing ones. A product or a service which is not already existing is considered unique. All this together comprises a project. Project can be a small one, a task which can be done within a week or a large work, a large industrial work which takes for years together. It depends all on the organization. It may involve a single person or thousands of people. The duration again I say it can be within a week time or a few years. A single unit which comprises of one department or a big organization involved in it. Whatever it can be is a project. Let us consider a few examples which says what is project. For example, consider a construction of a house or remodeling of a house. If I want to remodel my house, it is a project, it is a temporary work. I want to remodel, it has got a definite start, one day it will finish, remodeling will be completed. That means it has got a definite start and a definite end. It is temporary, a unique, that is I am remodeling the house. It is unique, a different model I want from what is not existing already. So, together we are saying it is a project. Now, what is not a project? If I keep on constructing a house, if I am doing it again and I construct one house and again I am constructing another. Say for example, I am taking this lecture, I am discussing this topic today. This is a project for me. Today I am doing it. I finish off. Once the lesson is done, it is completed. It has got a definite start and a definite end. I am giving a lecture on project management. It is a project. But again and again, I am giving the same project lesson is an ongoing operation. That means a project is converting into an ongoing process, implementing a new procedure or a process, developing a management information system, which is a big project introduction of an improvement to an existing process is can also be considered as a project. Now, let us consider what is project management. Project management is the application of the knowledge, the skills and the techniques to execute a project efficiently and effectively. It is a strategic competency of any organization. It is all about going through a process of organizing, leading, reporting and completing a project through the people. A whole project is entrusted to a single responsibility that is the project manager who coordinates, directs and controls throughout the project. He is the main entity for the project management. You can also say 
that project management is a planned undertaking within a stipulated time and cost. Project management generally draws knowledge on 10 areas. They are integration management, scope management, time management, cost management, quality management, procurement management, human resources management, communication management, risk management and stakeholder management. Integration management describes the process to ensure various elements such as the beginning, the project planning, the development, execution and the changes made to the project all are coordinated properly or not. The next knowledge area is the scope management. The scope management describes the process required to ensure that the project includes all the work required, whatever the work, the workflow, how it is going, whether it's going successfully or not, whether it is including the time, within the duration the work will be completed or not. All this includes the scope management. The next knowledge area is time management. Time management deals with the duration, the starting and the end of the project within the stipulated time the project is going or not. The next, the cost management. The cost management deals with the cost estimation of the project, the overall budget of the project, how to control the overloaded budget of the project. All this includes cost management. Next is the quality management. Quality management describes the process required to ensure that the project will satisfy the need of a customer or the stakeholder. Whether the project is going successfully in a way that it is planned, whether that high level of degree is giving or not. Next is the human resource management. This deals with the organizational planning, staff acquisition and the team development. Example, team building, problem solving, whether if any vacancy is there for the project to be completed, all these are taken care by the human resource management. Next is the communication management. Communication management deals with communication of planning from the beginning, the planning, talking to the stakeholders or whether getting the deals done or interacting with the customers, all these are taken care by the communication management. These are all the various knowledge areas, all these comprises together the project management, the various fields which involve in creating a project management system. The next is the risk management, whatever risk involved right from the starting to the end of the project. The risks involved, how to solve them, all these are taken care under the risk management. Next is the, the procurement management. Procurement management means the purchase of goods and selling of goods or whatever material or supplies are needed for the project to be successful. Whatever acquisition is done is taken care by the procurement management and the last one is the stakeholder management. This includes all the clients, the sponsors or the contractors, the dealers, everyone who is involved and interested in the project comes under the stakeholder management. Let me know to what extent you understand the first module. Let me ask you a few questions related to it. Give me an example of project. Rebuilding of our house. How do you uh, say it is a project? Project means it is a temporary work which can be done uniquely, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, this is a rebuilding is the temporary work which has a definite, definite and a definite start, definite and starting a definite and definite end. ending. Correct. What exactly? 
is project management. We have seen already that it is the application of the knowledge, knowledge and skills and the techniques to develop a project. Okay. Now, it has been already existing from ages before. We have seen an example of Great Wall of China or a building or constructions or old uh, monuments we have seen. All these are projects. That means the project management is already existing. But there is concept is not framed properly. It has come into existence only in 19th century. The concept of project management is defined. A concept is given. Okay, A system is framed only in the 19th century. In the 19th century, the president of US, Lincoln, has signed for the first modern project management concept. That is the transcontinental railroad to be constructed in 1862. This is considered as an example of the first modern project management concept. In 1862, the first treaty was signed by the president, Mr. Lincoln. However, 1950s is given as the first marking of the beginning of modern project management era. This has paved the way for our latest project management. We have seen that all teamwork, team building or the problem solving, all these are the concepts of project management. Okay? The knowledge areas, the risk, the cost, the time, the quality, the human resource involved, all these are seen even in olden days for the construction of Great Wall of China or for the construction of pyramids. The same thing is being implemented now, but it is only few extra points. We are giving a framework, we are giving a system approach for the project management in today's modern era. This is about the background of project management. There are four P's, that is people, product, process and project. These together make up one system that is the project management system. Let us first consider people. Who are the people that are involved in the project management system? It deals with the highly motivated, skilled people that comprises of the stakeholders, the team leaders, the managers, this, whether it can be a senior managers, the project managers, the customers, all these make up the people who are involved in the project management. Let us see various examples. The sponsors, the one who invests in the particular project. If you are taking up a project, whoever is involved, whoever is interested to sponsor that project are important for the main person who put the money into it, are important for a project. The senior managers who deals with the business who interacts with the sponsors, the clients, the stakeholders are also playing the significant role in the project. The project manager who is the main entity for the project, he is the one who plans, the motivates, organizes, controls the entire project. Next, the customers or the end users. The project manager is the person who has the overall responsibility for the successful initiation, planning, designing, execution, monitoring, controlling and the completion or the closure of a project. The main entity, I say again and again, the entire success and the failure of a project is dependent upon the project manager. A project manager and the team leaders should have the following abilities. It can be acronymed as MOI. M stands for motivation, 
O stands for organized problem solving style, I stands for influence and team building. What is to motivate? That is to encourage the project team to give their best for the project. Organized problem solving means to diagnose and structure a solution, apply lessons you have learned from the previous experience and remain flexible through provide a proper problem solving style. Influence and team building. The project manager should influence the team. He should always strive to build up a strong team. He should be able to understand their feelings, their communication, what is going on in their mind, how the team is working together, whether it's working together or is there any conflict among them. All this he should be able to understand. He should be able to read their signals or their minds. He should be a person who can be always in control even in highly stressed situations. All these make up a influential person to build up a strong team. Let us consider the various tasks of a project manager. The first one, gaining approval for the project aim and terms of reference. Selecting and leading the team and setting individual objectives. Ensuring a feasibility study is complete. What do you mean by feasibility study? Feasibility study is market study. If you want a new phone, you find out what extra features are needed in the new phone, right? If you are building a house, how the house should be, where should be the living room, how much budget should be allotted for that. All this comprises a feasibility study. Next is ensuring that the project is planned in appropriate detail, allocating and monitoring the work and the cost of the project, motivating the team members, reporting the progress back to the organization that is to the senior managers or even to the stakeholders at time. The project manager needs to give daily basis a report to his higher authorities. Next, helping the team in solving the problems that they get and finally achieving the goal within the time with the inclusion of the entire team. Also reviewing and closing down of the project. All these tasks include the role of project manager. Now we have seen people. Now next P is the product. What is the product? The final outcome which is expected, the expected outcome. I want a mobile phone. This is my product. It can be a service as well. And next is the process. The process is the framework, the entire framework that we have from the starting, the initiating of the project to the end of the project. Whatever the procedure is going on is considered, the framework is considered as the process. Generally, the process is divided into five components. What are the five components? First, the initiation, the planning, executing, monitoring and controlling and the final closing. These five components make up the framework of a process. And the final P is project. All these four P's are interdependent together. That is why I show up this picture which shows that all the four P's are interdependent. That is one is dependent on the other. Together all four P's comprise make up a project management system. The five components of project management are initiating, 
planning, executing, monitoring and controlling, the last one closing. First is the initiating the project, that is the starting of the project. Before you start a project, what has to be done? The process is used to gain preliminary approval of a project. The first and foremost, we need to get the approval of a project. If you are taking up a certain project, we need to get a approval of it from whom the client the or the stakeholder, you need to get an approval of that particular project. The project manager is responsible right from the beginning and the end of the project. Initiation of the project involves the first and foremost the approval of the project. Then when a project is ready to begin, there are number of items that must be validated to ensure that the project is ready to start. The project objectives such as the needs and the problems are assessed and established based on the market study and feedback analysis. We need to make a survey, want to produce a mobile phone, what extra features are needed, how competitive it will be in the project, how successful will this product will be once it is delivered into the market, whether is it overcoming the competition or not, all these includes a market study. The scope of the work involves is defined through this, what, how much time you should spend it, how, what cost it involves, what are the resources required for it, how are the quality standards and what are the deliverables. All these are make up a feasibility report that need to be maintained to start a project. This is the first component that is the initiating of the project. Next is the planning and designing the project. Planning involves setting of objectives, scope of planning, schedule development, resource planning, cost budgeting, quality planning, staff acquisition, risk identification. All this has to be documented in a baseline plan. For this, we can use multiple tools and techniques such as gun chart or perch chart. There are various techniques for setting up a plan. And using the drawings, you can design it. For example, say a flow chart, how a particular project has to move on. What is the workflow of a particular project? All this can be represented using the diagrams that is the designing of the project and the third one is the the implementation of all the planning and the designing in a properly organized coordinated way to get an expected outcome is the execution of the project and the fourth one is the monitor and control the project this is considered the longest as it starts from the beginning to the end of the project. Suddenly, the stakeholder may come up with extra requirements. If you are able to include it even in between, all this has to be monitored. And finally, the last component that is the closing of the project. Closing the project is similarly as important as the beginning of the project. Whether a project is successful or not, that also has to be documented and reported because a documentation always will be helpful to take up a next project so that you can have reference, it can be used as a reference. That's why the closing of a project also has to be recorded. A project is successfully closed only if the project evaluation is satisfactory. That is, you have to make an evaluation make an evaluation once the project is completed, whether it is successfully completed or it has been a failure, that is the evaluation. For this, the project manager will ask for the feedback. Once a product has come into the market, we see that there are many reviews on the internet. This is a feedback survey. 
quality is very essential. The quality standard has to be ensured to be always of high degree. This evaluation is performed even throughout the project, even while the execution is done. Every time execution is done, it is monitored, it is controlled and whatever changes are made, again the execution is done. It is like a loop that is going on until and unless a successful outcome is produced. Once it is produced, it is considered as a successful project and it is closed. So, this is the first lesson. Do you have any doubts in this? Mom, is it necessary to evaluate the project throughout or uh, only at the end? As we have seen in the monitor and controlling phase and also the closing phase that the monitoring is done right from the starting to the end of the project that is in each phase that is any changes are made it, it has to be evaluated that is even as minor change makes a lot of difference right. So evaluation is very important at every stage every phase that finally also has to be documented when you are closing a project ok. Any more doubts? No? With this we are done with the first lesson. Thank you.